final one um, of the day, um, and that is a sort of a, a kind of a guide or overview um, relating to mapillary, um, which I think is, you know, it's not something that I'm personally overly familiar with, so I'm, I'm actually quite keen to learn a bit more about um, how I can get my hands on mapillary data and so on and so forth, um, and what I can do with it. Um, so I believe, is that Kieran? is it yourself is giving the talk on this one? That's me, yeah, that's me, yeah. yeah. So I'll zip Perfect. along then. Thank you, MC. I'll zip along as quick as I can because I realise this is the graveyard shift and we've all done a lot of work this morning. So this is about Mapillary. Story of Mapillary is that it was a Swedish startup company entirely funded in its first year, which isn't long ago, it's 2013, um, by the Swedish government with a grant. And I think they won a sort of a competition and then they basically got this kind of startup elevator grant. And then the um app essentially captures ground level street view images i think most of us here know that um and captures the geolocation plus the haptic orientation the direction in which the screen is pointing and the store of images was uh, 500,000 in 2014 so they really burned their uh, servers in, in their first year but now they've got 1.6 billion and if you look at their website they have a little counter and the counter can sometimes it's static and then suddenly you see it jumping up thousands and thousands and thousands so um they they they've done a very valuable job in creating a street imagery that was available on on the um CCBYSA license standard which means obviously we can use it all in uh, OpenStreetMap or anyone can use it for anything really um so long as it's uh, attributed in some way and then the final point then is that in June 2020, which is exactly a year ago, Mapillary was bought out by Facebook. Now, I was planning to say this at the end, but I think I'll say it at the top. If you look at the Mapillary message boards and the chat rooms and the various uh, places that the users talk, there is a guarantee more or less that anything that's up there was contributed by people in goodwill that the Facebook has kind of promised not to take it away or charge for it or do anything different with it in it, other than its present condition and its condition of license so it's not going to go away they're not going to take away the server it's going to be available for people pretty much forever they've given that guarantee but that kind of implies that there may be something about to change and i think that's something that the mapillary contributors would have a little bit of reservation about and um, look, I don't, I don't want to labour that point, but it is them being bought by Facebook has changed a, a bit of the atmosphere for, for some of the users. So uh, ways to contribute to Mapillary. The, in, this sort of immediately comes across the conversation we were having earlier. Their first app was an Apple, uh, it was an iStore app. And they later developed the Android app. They had terrible problems with the Android app. I'll say that because I was a user, significant user of it. <clears throat> and I can tell you that it used to burn out phones and it would um, sort of retard uh, lens shutters and do all sorts of things to phones and then have um, inexplicable errors that would just um, have no solution to them. They made a, a kind of a Windows version Windows Phone version, which was available for download by, by via some sort of an APK file on their website. And then they had a web uploader, which you just had to con connect to their website and you could upload your imagery through an account that you had. If you didn't want to have their apps, you could have another kind of a device. So maybe you could have a, maybe one of those LG 360s, which I've been using or a GoPro or a, a Garmin or whatever kind of uh, street imagery capture device. So you don't have to have it on your phone. And then the other way of doing that, which does still exist, is the desktop uploader app, which is quicker than the web uploader, but you can't upload simultaneous sequences. So in a way, it's quicker, and in a way, it's slower. So sorry about that. Um, I have pictures that I've taken over the years of different things we were doing with Mapillary. I was involved. I'm in that picture there of Africa, by the way, somewhere at the back. It was a T-shirt that's way too small for me. And um, that was in Africa walking around. So you can walk around and capture things in groups. 
you can sling it to your bicycle, which you see there in, this, in the, the top right picture. You can have it in your car. I actually have it like that in my car. It's, I have a little uh, clip sitting in the window under the mirror, and that's a good way to do it, and that's facing forward. Or you can go out on a boat. That's me heading out to uh, Rockabill out off uh, Scary's. Uh, it was actually a work thing I was doing, and uh, yep, yeah, you can put it on a boat. And it's just as valid just to capture uh, things uh, uh, as you're going along. Um, obviously, when you go, when you get yourself invest in something more high powered, there's a, a Garmin Verb, which belongs to Dave Corley, who was in Africa with me, and we drove around with that in the front window, and we captured thousands of images of the roadways in uh, in Lesotho in Africa when we were working on something down there. So I normally have a load of slides which I show people here which is maximizing your efficiency with mapillary settings and I'm, I'm biased towards the Android settings but uh, basically what you need to know is this is your screen, your capture screen and in your capture screen it's sufficient to have the good. There's excellent which is green, good which is orange and bad, which is red, and the good is sufficient to get a, a good, a reasonably reusable um, image, which you can pull into your OpenStreetMap. The uh, second aspect there is the haptic, is where is this thing pointing? So you kind of do a setting, and then it it makes sure that it understands which way you were you were walking. The third thing is automated or manual. Sometimes when you're walking, it's better to do manual um, captures. Um, the fourth thing is the stop go button. The, obviously, the play or the record button is the, the red dot, and then it becomes a square when you want to stop it, and then that's the stop button. And um, I'll skip quickly through these, I won't do them all, but there is also a number seven is a, an orientation map which will show you where other images might exist in that area so that you don't have to go over the sequences done by somebody else. And then there's settings, which is number eight, which is sort of more advanced settings. Uh, I normally dive well into this, and I'm not going to do that today, but you, do, you should have decide things which, based on your performance of your device, are suitable. Um, maybe with an Android phone, it isn't a good idea to have sequences that are uh, intervals closer in than five meters. Um, uh, because Android phones can get worn out, different things like that. And then your capture would be um, whether you're uh, going to be capturing a forward or what orientation. And then your storage is very, very important. So uh, you can do things with your storage that will, that will maximize. I think I have one slide on that, which is to set your, if your Android is very old, set your storage limit to zero. So in other words, when the phone is at zero, it'll take as many photographs as possible. And then get a micro SD card, which is the, the the little card there. I think that's my finger. I hope it is. It isn't. I've, I've pictured somebody else. You can use a, a tasker. This is one I used in Malahide with a bunch of kids from Port Marnock School. Actually, it includes Port Marnock as well. And you can um put a kind of a task grid down and when there's a kind of a certain density which you can define of images in that area it'll it'll turn that uh green for you and that's available in the mapillary website you can't really see that in your phone as you're walking around but it is a sort of a handy thing for groups to do so I suppose if open street map ireland ever got to do in a group event we might use something like that we didn't use that in clonmel interesting Interestingly, probably because we forgot it, that it exists, but it is a handy enough thing. Um, the Obviously, if you don't use Mapillary, you haven't got experience of using it. It's available in the JOSM editor and in the ID editor. It's very simple in the ID editor. It's just one of the overlay, one of the references, the reference data things that you can use. Um, in the... Um, JOSM, which is what you see here, it's a little bit more um, complicated. You have to download it as a, um, I'm going to remember now in a second what the what the word, word is. But it's a plugin. Plugin. Thank you. I needed that. And we needed a plugin to get it working in JOSM. So you get it working in JOSM. And you can obviously say, well, look, right here I have a blurry image on a wet day or on a damp day in Dublin in front of Dahl Aaron where there's a, um, where there's a 
um, pedestrian crossing lights. And so you can go in and you can um, map where that is. You can pick it off. I don't know if you can see the little red dot just to the left of the dialogue. Um, and you can pick off that location and say, okay, that's it, I've got it. It's a crossing equals traffic signals. So, so that's how you do it effectively. That's a simple way of looking at it. There's another way to use it. And I've noticed that an interesting symbiosis has developed between me and another mapper whose name is Urban Duck Warfare, who most of you will know as Colin, Colin Moore. And um, I've been capturing a lot around where I live, and this is Ballymun, which is in the, sort of the next parish over from me. And um, I've pretty much done most of the roads or all of the roads. Um, and he, um, Colin comes along and he uses this view of it, um, which is in Mapillary itself, where the AI detection uh, tells you what sort of what class of a sign it is following the sort of international parameters for these signs and believe it or not these signs i know they do have deviations but they do kind of also follow some certain international standards and the pillory has plugged in the ai recognition on them so that they can tell you what it is and what the tag is so it, it that's a two window approach you'd have your maybe your id editor in one window and you'd have this in your other window and that's uh, pretty much how that would work so it does mapillary does help you find the correct tag it does it, it's very integrated with open street map and I, I think the longer that relationship exists between open street map and mapillary uh the better so i've done a, um I don't know how much reaction I got. I know I got some. I've done a quirky uh, diary post about um, one time uh, when I uh, tooled my car up with six old Android phones and put them all, rather than buying, you know, being a cheapskate as I am, rather than buying a uh, nice device, which I now do have, um, I put one, one of each of those things in the window of the car looking in every direction. And I suddenly found that I had over a million uh, images very, very quickly. And I'm quite high in the mapillary stakes. I think I'm like 140 in the world or something. They told me what it was one time. And, and I haven't really been contributing as much um, in the last couple of years. Um, sure, that's what board membership will do for you. Um, uh, but anyway, I've done a quirky diary post there about that kind of thing. Let's use uh, let's just read that yourselves if you can find your way to my diary there, the big C. Um, some comments about Ireland. Ireland. Um, my contact with Mapillary themselves uh, and Edward O'Neill has shown that Ireland is seen as a place that's not very well covered, and it could be a reflection of the size of our um, OpenStreetMap community. Um, but um, they wonder as well, is it weather? You know, do we not like going out that much? Um, but anyway, we do have big clusters as well as gaps uh, like everywhere would. And uh, the big clusters are obviously Dublin, which I've contributed rather a lot to. Now, there's other users here in this call who've also helped Dublin. I wouldn't uh, diminish their, uh, their contributions. Um, Galway is very big because of Dave Corey. Sorry to identify people by name, but that's what, what needs to be done here. Dave deserves credit for what he did in Galway. He's done a complete lattice of connected roads, uh, which is fantastic there. And then um, Waterford, there's a couple of users uh, contributing to Waterford, but one in particular is um, Dave. And I can't remember the numbers he uses after his name, and I don't know his second name, and I've never met him. And uh, Sligo then would be Noel. Um, and then the smaller clusters are in Fermanagh, Kilkenny and Cork. And um, But we had to have a lot of gaps in Ireland. We could really do a lot better, particularly with the summer. We should be maybe goading one another to get out and, and capture images. And I know that uh, with my own time being a little freer now, I'm going to be working away on that. Uh, uh, like a devil. Well, that's pretty much uh, me. I'll stop sharing there. Sorry if I was boring in the graveyard shift, but there it is. Uh, right. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Kieran, thanks for that. I mean, it, it isn't something that I've used a huge amount of in the past. I, I, I'm aware of the plugin in um, Jossam, but uh, it is. 
I've been doing a lot of mapping lately up in Northwest Donegal, which is a, a big hole um, on, on that. And actually, I will be heading up there uh, later um, in the summer. So I'll um, must. I'll, I'll loan, I will loan you a device that you can use. <laughs> well, I have a phone, but I was just thinking of maybe a, a mount, a mount or something. So, no, I might, I might give you a, I might give you an actual camera and. Uh, all right. Some... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, um, I'll, I'll get in touch with you about that. I'll probably uh, be about a month's time, I think, when I'm heading up that way. Um, but it'll mostly be um, to and from the place I'll be staying on the beach, hopefully, depending on the weather. But uh, no, that's, that's very useful. I mean, it, it, I think it's 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 something that we should be looking to get more of. I mean, the street view imagery uh, from Google is supremely useful for all sorts of other things, but of course we can't use it um, in OpenStreetMap. Um, so thank you very much for that. Actually, the there are a couple of questions um, in the chat that I'm going to come to now. Um, first of all, uh, Domo mentions that there is a Linux uploader. Um, so again, if you, if you are a Linux user, um, contact Dono. He will get, send you the link to that if you, if you wish to do it. Um, is it possible to use the mapillary imagery in the ID editor? Do you know, Kieran? It is possible. OK, yeah. yeah I, um, I, 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 can, I can demo that very quickly if you, if you like. Um, I'm just going to present uh, my screen. Hopefully this works. Um, so this is uh, uh, just up the road for me. And in, if I remember correctly, it's in map data. Um, so on the right hand side here, you've got a bunch. Uh, so one of them is, a, is the background setting that lets you set which imagery you want. The one below it is map data. Uh, and then you've got map pillory. And there's also open street cam, which is a, a sort of a, a similar uh, product. Um, and that will bring up um, uh, the imagery for you. Um, so you can see here, actually, that uh, the green ones are, uh, if I just click on one of them, hopefully, uh, you'll see it show up here. Uh, so this is one I took with uh, uh, um, my phone uh, as I walked around the community center. Uh, and then uh, this one, uh, which um, the blue one is one that I uploaded to, uh, well, it was OpenStreetCam. It's now called Carter View uh, due to a change in ownership. Um, and this was taken with uh, uh, my dash cam um, and uploaded to both Mapillary and to uh, Carter View. Um, I think what I'm seeing here is that it doesn't currently pull in newer images. So one of the things that's happened very recently in Mapillary is that they have cha up, uh, updated their API. So previously, people were using version 3, uh, and they've now switched to version 4. What I'm seeing here is that version 4 imagery is not currently available with ID. But uh, as long as you're not looking for very recent stuff, uh, you should be able to access the mapillary imagery that is there. So uh, that's me done. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Um, there, was some, there were some questions um, on, on uh, recommendations for car cams. I think you have an excellent diary on that, uh, which somebody has uh, connected to. So if you are interested, uh, um, I'm just moving through it quickly here myself. But there's um, that that link that is provided in in the uh, in the chat there. Uh, thanks, Carter, for that. Um, that does link uh, gives plenty of information on, on cameras and, and procedures. Excellent. Okay, so does anybody else have any questions for uh, for Donald or for Kieran on Mapillary? No. Okay, that's cool. I think then at this point it's uh, we're concluding the lightning talks section of the day. Um, I want to thank all the speakers. Um, it's all these. These are always the fun things. It's um, you know very. Uh, nice to be able to listen to quite a variety of different contributors and the contributions that they've made to the map and, and, and learn a few things at the same time. So thank you all very much for taking the time uh, to do that. Um, and a special thanks to Keir as well, who, who can't be here, unfortunately. Um, and Anne as well, who was heavily involved in, in, in the project down in uh, Carmel. Thank you all.